but so we still have to make the decision to struggle forward Mm -hmm. but he's going to be there to make the struggle easier or at the very least we know we're not alone Mm -hmm. 100 I'm Susan Goss, and as a seasoned therapist of more than 15 years, I'm honored to have had the opportunity to gain so much wisdom from so many people and love passing that knowledge on to others. So join me and some of my favorite friends as we share some tangible truths with you. And again, before we get started on the podcast, just a quick reminder on the the ticket giveaway that we Yay. have for the upcoming 3C conference. We want to honor our podcast listeners by giving you guys a chance to win free tickets to our conference on June 7th and 8th, featuring the lovely Susan Goss and her uh, childhood best friend, Beth Moore. What we're asking, if you guys could just go to whatever platform that you listen to the podcast on and leave a review. Reviews are so important in the podcast world, and we would love for you guys to do that. Five stars would be fabulous. And what we're going to do is on the 20th, we are going to pick two reviews and those two people are each going to win two tickets completely free to come to our concert here, Woo-hoo! our concert, our conference, <laughs> excuse me, here in Bentonville. We are super excited. We cannot believe that it is just three weeks away and we're just so honored that you guys spend time with us every week as we talk about God and about mental health and that you guys just honor us by giving us that time. We're so excited and that'll be announced on the 21st. Correct. Right? That'll be announced at the, on the in the podcast on the 21st. Oh, we are so excited. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And now let's get to the podcast today. Hey, guys, welcome back to the Tangible Truth Podcast. And Carrie, I am so glad that you're back uh, know, with me, me today. We had a great, great podcast for anyone that missed it last week. Please go back. It's on mental health month, but don't let that scare you because we had a great time talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. It was a good time of just saying it's not about diagnosing anything. It's just becoming self-aware of where you are in your emotional health, your spiritual health, your mental health, and your uh, physical health. Um, It was -hmm. was super great. Um, And what I love is, um, so I've had a chance to read your new devotional book. Mm. Love it. It is for pre-sale on Amazon if you guys want to jump out there and grab Rabbit. And one of my favorite ones, I would love the chance to read for our audience, if that's okay with you. Okay. Um, and of course, you, if you guys have ever heard me, uh, first time I was on the podcast, I was talking about the fact that I'm a runner and that kind of stuff. And I don't know if it's because this is talking about a runner that it just hits me so hard. Um, but it is called The Love Race. Oh. And it references the scripture, 1 Corinthians 16, 14, and do everything with love. It's super short. I'm just going to read the actual devotional because I cannot do it justice to try and give you the Reader's Digest version of this. So it says in 1992, British athlete Derek Redmond was set for the race of his life in the 400 meter semifinals of the Barcelona Olympics. He had already won his first round heat and quarterfinals and was poised for another win. In lane five, Derek had a great start out of the blocks, running with the focus of being the winner as he crossed the finish line. But 15 seconds into the race, something happened. A deafening pop, an abrupt stop, and Derek went down as he grabbed hold of his right hamstring in anguish. Officials started moving towards him, yet despite excruciating pain with the determination of a true Olympian, he waved them away as he struggled to get upright and began hobbling around the track to the finish line with the same focus as he started the race. Then... A most familiar voice made its way through all the noise and the officials. Derek said in an interview, I had held it together until I heard his voice and I knew it was my dad. I lost it. Mm -hmm. This man had been alongside me my whole life, supporting me, sacrificing. And when I heard his voice, I knew I could let down. His dad said, you're a champion. You've got nothing to prove. Derek said at that moment, dad, I want to finish. Get me back to the semifinal. His dad replied, okay, we started this thing together and we'll finish it together. Together, Derek and his dad crossed the finish line in the world's greatest competition. Sometimes it's about much more than the competition itself, isn't it? All the hours, the years of training, the regimen, the laser focus and the sacrifices made along the way. 
When Derek heard his father's voice, felt his father's touch, he was safe. Derek's father loved his son unconditionally, and his son knew that and felt safe in his father's arms. That's the kind of love that God has for us, too. And just like Derek, when we fall, feel defeated, or find ourselves otherwise racked with pain, struggling to find our way back up, Jesus meets us. And like Derek's father, God puts his loving, comforting arms around us to hold us up and let us know that we're not alone. Jesus stays close and walks with us, letting us lean on him for every step. Whether we're crawling, walking, or running, God is by our side. There is not a part pace too slow or too fast for God. You can't outrun him and you can't outweigh him. His love is unconditional and his arms are safe. I love that. I know you wrote it, but I, I hope it gives you goosebumps as much as it does me. Listen, I love the story itself. Yes. And I had to name it the love race. Yes, definitely. There's so much love in that. Yeah. And what I love about it is it's such a beautiful picture of, you know, last podcast we discussed just becoming self-aware of where we were. Mm -hmm. And if you're in that place where I feel like I'm falling apart, this story is a perfect example of how you can go to God and just fall apart. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I first researched that and read the full story of Derek and his dad, I bawled. Oh, uh, I would I have. Mean, I just <laughs> bawled uh, because I remember this race. I remember. Do you really? Yes, okay. I, I do. I mean, I remember, you know, yeah. seeing snippets of it in the research when mm-hmm. I read and I it is such a beautiful testimony of unconditional love. Mm -hmm. So it just, it brings tears. You know, the story itself brings tears every single time. And you're right. Whether you're hobbling or running, you just see Jesus, you know, Mm -hmm. in the dad running to me. You just see Jesus in the dad. I mean, I just immediately thought that is the love race, like I said, that was so easy to name, Mm -hmm. you know, the love race, the love race, because that's us. We're on a journey during the love race. Yeah. And and Jesus is Derek's dad. (laughs) I mean, yeah. And sometimes I love that there were, there are times probably in his races where his dad was at the finish line when he got there. Yes. And there are times where in this particular instance, he couldn't meet him at the finish line because he didn't have the the physical capacity mm-hmm. to make it on his own. Mm-hmm. So Jesus met him where he was. And mm-hmm. that's not like the perfect picture mm-hmm. of that idea. I don't know what is. Yes. And then when he fell, he wouldn't let other people mm-hmm. come, you know. Yeah, that, I said the officials were trying to help him and, and all that kind of like stuff. he was like pushing them away. Mm-hmm. No, you're not safe. Mm -hmm. You know, which Jesus warns us about that. And not that the officials would have hurt him in any Mm -hmm. way, but still he knew they're not safe. I can't. He was mentally in that place. Right. And I can't rest in your arms. No, you know, you can't carry me Mm -hmm. away. And I know, you know, but when his dad came, he knew he could Mm -hmm. rest in his arms. He was so much. That's just God for us. And so there's so many lessons in this story Mm -hmm. um, to learn from, you know, because because of Derek's dad, and he even mentioned it, all the hours that he was with him, Mm -hmm. you know, all the time spent, uh, all the practices he was there with him, just like Jesus is always Mm -hmm. there with us. Every single trial we go through, all the good, all the bad, Jesus is always there with us. Mm -hmm. And no matter what we go through, he is there. He's the rock. Just just so many lessons um, as we can relate to in this story. Yeah. One of the other ones I like, I loved, and it has uh, to do with Derek himself is just this idea that, um, for those of you that know me in real life or have, we've talked, I have a a tattoo on my arm that says struggle forward. Mm. Um, and actually it's a quote from a podcast from an ultra runner that I just fell in love with this idea that, um, you know, especially as a runner that it's all about, well, what was your pace? How fast did you go? And sometimes it's not about that. It's Mm -hmm. about just 
moving forward does. And I love the idea that Derek's like, I was here. I, you know, I knew who my safe people were when my dad got there and I looked at my dad and said, I want to keep going. Mm -hmm. And I think that really does relate to Jesus when he meets us where we are, he's not going to drag us, Mm -hmm. but so we still have to make the decision to struggle forward, Mm -hmm. but he's going to be there to make the struggle easier. Or at the very least, we know we're not alone. Mm -hmm. 100%. And you know, I'm reminded as you're saying that of one of my favorite scriptures, again, (laughs) fickle, fickle, fickle. Depends on the day. (laughs) But depends on the day of what my favorite scripture is. But uh, Matthew 11, 28 uh, and 30 through 30, you know, come to me. Mm-hmm. All you are weary yes. and burdened and I will give you rest mm-hmm. for my yoke is easy and burden is light. You know, where I've, uh, you know, again, you've heard me speak a lot. That is a, that's a verse that goes with circle talk when mm-hmm. I do circle talk. And when I did a lot of research on that verse, I, God revealed to me, I was making the yoke very mm-hmm. heavy because I was trying to control. It was about more about the reins of like there's a yoke is very heavy yes and it's placed between two ox but it's really not about you know when I'm trying to control it's not really about Mm -hmm. the yoke it's about who's in control of the reins between that the plowing would be harder if the ox fought against the yoke (laughs) Yoke. (laughs) and so he was like saying let go Mm -hmm. and let me be in charge of the reins and the yoke is so light and so doesn't mean those issues are going to go away it still means you're going to go through hard but if I'm behind the reins I walk through everything with Mm -hmm. you and I guide you uh, around the rocks yes and around this and that yes and then together it's so much easier this reminds me of Derek and his dad Mm -hmm, definitely when Derek was he let go he finally let Mm -hmm. go like I know I'm not going to be able to do this alone right can you imagine if he had tried to do be like no I can I snapped a hamstring or whatever that and you know he's he, what if he didn't accept his dad's help? Well, number one, he would have injured himself. Exactly. He would have it, it, would injured himself. It would have himself. taken longer. He would have, sorry, I hit my microphone. It would have taken longer. He would have potentially permanently ended his career. Right. Because they had no idea what was really wrong with him, what he had snapped. And so I love, it's a perfect combination of his, the race might not have been what he wanted it to be, but it was still easier when he chose to allow his dad to help as opposed to trying to do it on his own. Right. And as it relates to Matthew 11, you know, 28 through 30 with God's help. Yes. And together with God, Mm -hmm. when we allow God to work in and through us Mm -hmm. side by side, we, he through us, we do and can get things accomplished, right? Not on our own strength, but yeah. his strength in mm-hmm. us. So as it relates to Derek, I'm going back and forth from scripture to Derek and his dad. But they match so well. <laughs> they do. And Derek and his dad got through the finish line mm-hmm. because of it. Yeah. And so it was like, come to me, my son. Right. Ye who are weary, you know, and that's what God does for us. Yeah. And I, I do want to circle back to one thing you said, because I think it's super important is the idea idea of um he knew that his dad was a safe person yes um and we know that jesus is also our safe person um but just from a if someone to some people that might sound like a therapy word or not they might not understand like how do you explain to someone how to find their safe person and i know we probably can't give all that information in one thing but is it an emotional thing that you know, or is it like a time tested thing that you know who your safe people are? Mm-hmm. Um, like if someone came to you and said, I, I don't think this person is my safe person, you know, how would you instruct them to, to try to find a safe person that they can have that with? You know, there are a lot of different, you know, sometimes I call them red flags. Okay. Okay. So, um, and some of them are very simple and very practical. Some of them are deeper. You know, you mm-hmm. know, a person's not safe if they just come right, right out. Yeah. And they, uh, you know, they're very angry to you, mean 
to you are put you down, um, are destructive to mm-hmm. you, abusive to you. Those very obvious things, mm-hmm. we don't even call them red flags. You walk away. Yes. Okay. Now, and I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about friendships here. Uh, but if somebody even, if I were to say, Carrie, um, you know, and this is on a consistent basis, mm-hmm. you know, Carrie, my neck is killing me. You know, it hurts all the time. And you were to say, neck, let me tell you about my neck. My neck has been mm-hmm. killing me for yep. years. The now. one up My neck, yes. <laughs> and uh, my neck has been killing me. And I go to so-and-so's doctor. Now my neck, you know, uh, it's, you make it about you. Mm-hmm. And you make it about you all the time. And what happens in my brain is I go, tick, 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 tick. Don't ever tell Carrie anything mm-hmm. about myself that's personal. Now, yep. I still remain friends with Carrie, but it's like, ooh, weather, mm-hmm. weather's hot. Uh, ooh, it's going to rain today. Mm-hmm. Uh, in other words, surface talk. Yeah. But I'm never going to say anything uh, anything personal to Carrie because in my mind, it's registered not safe to go personal. Now, that's not just one time that you would do that, but yeah. over like two or three times, if I've tried to go and tell you something mm-hmm. about, oh, well, I've had the grandkids over. Grandkids, listen, I keep the grandkids <laughs> all the time. I have always, yeah. you make it about you, mm-hmm. and I don't get to ever share my heart. My heart is never heard with with you. Okay. So I register not a safe person to share anything personal. Okay. But hey, you know, look, look at that tree over there. (laughs) You know, that's safe. Yeah. You know, so again, surface is fine and I still can remain friends, Mm -hmm. but sharing, but sharing personal stuff, not to say, now that's super practical and all that. Now, therapeutically, I will go there. A safe person is something that, you know, someone that you can share, you know, if I can share my soul Mm-hmm. With you, if, you know, uh, if I can share, you share your soul with somebody that you're safe with emotionally yeah. and physically. You share your soul, and soul mm-hmm. is <laughs> transparent. Yeah. It's personally. different than the day to day things. Yeah, I mean, you go deep. You share yeah. your soul with somebody that you're safe with emotionally yeah. and physically. Um, then you you share your, your, you share your soul with. Yeah. And I don't think that's a lot of people. Like, I think we have this belief that we should be, you know, open and honest with everyone. I don't think everyone has earned the right. And tell me if I'm wrong. I don't think everyone has earned the right to know the deepest part of you. No, no. To be right. Right. Honest. You know, you need to tell the truth, Mm -hmm. but to be totally transparent. I mean, and I'm talking about uh, deepest, darkest. Yeah. Yes. You need to be and tell the truth, of course. And I would hope that I'm a safe person Mm -hmm. for for people. But you're right. You don't want to go. You don't want to air your dirty laundry, yeah. as my grandmother used to say <laughs> right? to me, Susan Ann. You know, yeah. you know, don't share your dirty laundry with everyone. Right, and I feel we're a little bit we're in that in this social media mm-hmm. age that people are like I'm going to be as honest as possible because we that word authentic gets thrown around, mm-hmm. and if I'm not sharing every nasty detail of my life, then I'm not living my authentic mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. No, it's okay to keep like some things for those very few safe core people. Yeah. I mean, you can say, hey, you know what? I'm I'm struggling. Um, pray for me, you mm-hmm. know. And the people that need to know what that struggle is. You've already told them. Need, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're not surprised by it. Yeah. But like, I don't think you need to, unless God has called you to make this your ministry. Like I used to have a friend that would be like, she was having a lot of struggles with some, some suicidal ideations and that kind of stuff. And she was just blasting it out there on her social media. And I'm like, I don't think that's healthy. And I could be, again, I'm not a well, the therapist. You know, you can ask God to, uh, who do you share? Who am I supposed yeah, to share this absolutely. with? And he will reveal to you, you'll feel comfortable 
who you share that with, but you're exactly right. It's not to everyone Mm -hmm. and everyone has their different levels that they feel comfortable with. But yeah, if you have one trusted friend and of course God first, Mm -hmm. but a trusted friend is such a blessing, such a blessing. Yeah. Where you can say the, 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 the nasty stuff, the bad stuff, the the stuff that devil, the devil tries to put in your thing, your way, Mm -hmm. and you know, they're not going to judge you. Right. That's such a big part of who is my safe friend. Friend, who can I say the worst of the worst? And now they're going to, you know, reprimand me in love and try to steer me back to where, you know, where God has called me to. But it's not going to come from a place of judgment. It's going to come from a place of love. And you can say you can be transparent and be very mature in, in how mm-hmm. you say it. Yeah. You know, that is a long way of saying <laughs> uh, who is safe in your life. But not everyone is. And we're mm-hmm. not safe for other people. Um, yeah. So you have to And I just, think that's something everyone mm-hmm. needs to learn. I think that's a really, I mean, I love that we dived into that just a smidge because I think sometimes people don't understand the concept of what a safe person is. Mm -hmm. Some people they're like, oh, well, I get along with them and we have fun and we quote unquote talk. Mm -hmm. That's not the same as being a safe person. Mm -hmm. Right. You um, have to be, you have to show discernment, Mm -hmm. ask God for wisdom and discernment on every friendship. And, you know, of course, I'm a marriage therapy that gets into a totally different level of what safety is. And, and we, uh, that's our goal is to create safety Mm -hmm. in relationship in couples. So if they come in and they don't feel safe, it's our goal to create safe, Mm -hmm. uh, safety between those two, because sometimes there's betrayal Mm -hmm. and sometimes there's, sometimes that person's not the safe person for a while. So, um, we have to work on creating that. So, uh, safety is a big word Mm -hmm. and a lot to talk about and a lot of prayer, you know, and, but Mm -hmm. you do need wisdom and that would be godly wisdom and godly discernment. Cause if you have 10 people, you're going to ask about that word, you're going to get 10 different responses. Truth. Yes. So you do need to ask for godly wisdom and godly discernment. Yeah, I think that's great. I think Mm -hmm. it's so great. And Mm -hmm. I still love the story. It's one of my favorite ones in your book. Mm -hmm. Um, And like I said, part of it might be because I'm a runner and but Mm -hmm. part of it, too, is just it's such a a realistic picture of God meeting us where we are and picking us up and helping us to the finish line of whatever it is in our life. That's exactly right. And Derek, uh, speaking of safety, he did not accept the officials again when he fell mm-hmm. he did not accept them because they were not safe yeah. to him he didn't know and them he had they probably not, didn't speak the same language no I mean, and the reason they were not safe is they you know had not they didn't have a bond mm-hmm. they did not have a connection yeah. like he and his father did so our connection with jesus is the ultimate that we all Mm -hmm. need to crave and want because God wants that with us. And he is safe. He will always be safe for us. And I think that's so good. Yes. And he and his dad, of course, (laughs) with a safe connection. So sweet. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and end this episode. We are so excited to be just spending this mental health month with you guys. And make sure you go back and check out last episode where we uh, discussed um, just a little self-awareness checklist you can go through. And we will be back with you guys next week um, with more Tangible Truths. Thank you. Love you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Tangible Truth Podcast, part of the KLRC Podcast Network.